good people greet you with a smile and a shame. Glory, hallelujah. Never get tired of hearing that song, do you? All right. All right, you guys are going to have to wake up a little bit today. I can already tell you that, all right? Either that or Don's going to have to start making the coffee a little bit stronger, one of the two. Yeah. It's good to be in the house of the Lord today, man. All right, now you're with me. I like that better. I'm excited to be here, too. I tell you what, I always look forward to Sunday. Sunday is the best day of the week. Amen. Amen. I tell you, we're going to do something a little bit different today. The title of the message is called, It's More Than Just a Time Killer. How many of you waste at least five minutes a week? <laughs> Come on now, get real. Come on, hands up. How many of you waste at least an hour a week? Okay, all right. Two hours? Okay, y'all are wasteful people. Boy, oh, my goodness. Woo! My goodness, we're going to be in Colossians chapter 3, Colossians chapter 3, here in just a moment. Now, I'm going to tell you, I'm going to tell you a couple of little stories. I couldn't pick which one I wanted to tell you the most, but I can't pick on the rest of the band, all right? It's kind of dangerous for me, uh, so I'm going to pick on myself. Oh, but you'll like it, trust me. I'll tell you, you'll like it. Yeah, today the message is on music. This is one of my passions. This is one of the things I absolutely love. I, I think music is such a vital part of worship, isn't it? Amen? I want you to hear that. Yeah. I, I tell you what, being a drummer, drummers are always the butts of bad jokes. Some of them are pretty good, actually. I kind of like this. So it being Music Sunday, I thought I would just tell some, a couple of uh, drummer stories. Can, are y'all good with that? If you know anything about drummers, they're not too hard to understand, otherwise a drummer wouldn't tell them. Man, y'all don't know very many drummers. If you, if you do, you know I'm right about that. A drummer walks into a public library and tells the librarian, I'd like to order a hamburger, french fries, and a small root beer. All right, once again. A drummer walks into a public library and tells the librarian, I'd like to order a hamburger, french fries, and a small root beer. The librarian asks, do you have any idea where you are? This is a library. The drummer blushes and whispers, sorry, I would like to order a hamburger, french fries. That's good stuff right there now. Come on, you like that. All right. All right, well, I got to do one more because I just love these drummer jokes. I don't often get a chance to do these, you know, but they're so much fun. A woman goes to the doctor who, is ha who has the result of a recent blood test. The doctor says, I'm sorry to say it's not good news. Oh. Thank you. See, you guessed you'll catch on to that here in a little bit. You only have six months to live. Aww. Thank you. Woman said, oh dear, that's terrible. What can I do? What will make me live longer? Doctor said, well, you could try marrying a drummer. <laughs> the woman said, well, will that make me live longer? The doctor said, no, it'll still be six months, but it'll sure seem a lot longer. <laughs> Y'all stand, we're going to read our scripture this morning. We're going to get down to the serious stuff now. <laughs> Enough of the drummer jokes. Colossians chapter 3, we're going to start with verse 15. If you're looking at God's holy word, gentlemen, I'm going to ask you that you remove your cover in honor of God's word here today. Verse 15, let the peace of Christ rule in your hearts, since as members of one body you are called to peace. And be thankful. Let the message of Christ dwell among you richly as you teach and admonish one another with all wisdom through psalms, hymns, and songs from the Spirit, singing to God with gratitude in your hearts. 
And whatever you do, whether in word or deed, do it all in the name of the Lord Jesus, giving thanks to God the Father through Him. Amen. Let's, let's pray. Father, I just thank you for your word this morning, Father. This brief three minutes we have left here at Cowboy Church this morning. I pray that your spirit would speak to our hearts today. Father, we just love you. We praise you. We come in adoration of only you today. In Jesus Christ's name we pray. Amen. 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 You may be seated. All right, I got another question. This might be participation Sunday here. We'll see how this goes. Although you guys are going to have to be better than you have been. So maybe the drummer jokes will help. How many of you drive down? How, well, first of all, how many of you would consider yourself a decent singer? <laughs> all right, not many of you. All right. Okay. All right, is that your opinion or are you why? Okay, all right. Okay. All right, let me ask this question. Maybe this is a better question. How many of you drive down the road and you got your radio on, it's got your favorite country western station on it, and if I were to drive by you, you're singing at the top of your lungs because you sound just like George Strait, Reba McIntyre, or somebody else. Amen? Yeah. Yeah. See, that's what I thought. Yeah. Amen. I, I got a point to this. We'll come back to it here in just a minute. All right? Music. Music. You know, in the time that I've been here with this church, uh, is seven years, uh, going on eight, by the way. We're going on eight years. I don't think I've ever preached on this. I don't think I've ever preached on the value of music and worship. But I tell you what, in the eight years that we've been a church, we've had the best music, and I'm not going to say some of the best. It has been the best. The best, the best music in the world. That has nothing to do with me. We've just been, God has certainly blessed us with some incredible musicians here, but, but I've never talked about the value of it. You know, and there's a biblical value to music. Now, today I want to look at why do we do music in church? What's the point? Is it really part of worship? Is, musical, is music biblical? What's the music, music supposed to accomplish in worship? Is it, does it accomplish anything? And it does, all right? And we're going to get to that here in a minute. Uh, there's no doubt that music plays a very vital role in worship here. It plays a vital role in every worship service you go to. Amen? Amen. All right. For some of you that haven't been in church in a while, maybe some of you that haven't been in church at all until you came here, it's vital here, but it's also vital everywhere else. All right? There's a reason for it. Perhaps one of the biggest controversies, I think, in churches today is music. Can I get an Amen. Good, 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 good. Now, I'm glad some of you don't even know that's going on. Praise God. But for some of you that have been uh, privy to some of this, you know that it is a controversy. It's a shame that it's that way, but it is. I've seen churches split up over music. Amen? I mean, and it really has to do with the style of it. And can you believe that we're so caught up in what we want as far as style that we can actually split up God's house over it? But we do. I mean, I've seen it happen. Some of you enjoy the more contemporary style of music, while some of you absolutely do not like it, and you're just an old hardcore, old school, let's sing it out of the hymn book. Amen? All right. I'm not going to ask you who's who. I don't want to split this church either. All right. I want to submit to you today that style is not the issue. Oh, oh listen closely. I want to submit to you today that style is not the issue. We, does anybody realize, and for some of you that, uh, oh, oh, no, I can't do that. That's bad. Um, <laughs> that devil was just talking to me right there. Go on, better go on. <laughs> some of you don't like contemporary kind of music, but I want to tell you something. The song that we just did is a contemporary song. Now, interestingly enough, I didn't hear any of you going boo or anything like that. And why? Because the style of the way it was played was played to your liking. Amen? Amen. Amen. All right. Well, here we go. Nah. <laughs> Music isn't about style. It's about attitude of worship. It's about attitude of worship. Ooh, ooh, now the rubber hits the road, right? Uh, 
most of us make it about style, and that's why you love to come to Cowboy Church so much, and that's why you love the music that's done here at Cowboy Church, because you like that honky-tonk style that we do here. Yeah. Yeah. I, I have said this all along, and I'm going to continue to say this. What has grown this church uh, predominantly in the last seven years has been the music. It has. You know, and uh, I, I think credit's due there. These guys are absolutely wonderful, and they're very committed to doing what they do, and they do it very well. Uh, but I believe that the music is what's grown this church. Today I want to look at worship, cowboy church, especially the music and the role it plays in our worship today. Now, when does worship start? Oh, good answer. I'll tell you what, we got some smart folks here, amen? Yeah. Let me tell you what, it starts before you walk through the door. You know what, I'm going to tell you, here's the reason why I know that. How many of you got up in a great mood today? And by the way, your, your spouses are sitting next to you, so if you're lying, they're going to punch you, okay? I just want you to know that. How many of you woke up this morning and you were just a little crabby today? Come on, admit it. All right. I'm going to venture to say that those of you who woke up today and you were happy and you were ready to go to church already had a spirit of worship before you ever hit the door today. Amen? Sure you did. You know, I want to tell you, up here, these guys up here, myself, and by the way, I can see through this drum screen, but I can see people's faces in worship. Some of you look like you just ate the worst onion you've ever seen in your life. I mean, you couldn't have any more of a sour face. It's like, oh my Lord, we're going to sing that song again. <laughs> you know? And, and some of you face it, let's face it, you know, some of you visitors were a little bit concerned because we got some folks here that are about borderline Pentecostal kind of folks. You know what I mean? And buddy, when they hear a good fiddle or they hear a good steel or they hear some good lead instrument up here, piano, guitar, whatever, boy, their feet are going in there to their up there giving it like that. By the way, this is the Pentecostal cowboy version of church right there. You know what I mean? Yeah. We get excited here over that. Amen? we get excited because God is good and God's the author and founder and purpose of our music. Amen? Why shouldn't we be excited about that, right? Alright, well let's just suppose that you're not excited yet. I say yet. I'll, I'll get you there before the day's over. I submit to you that you have entered this building today for one of the following reasons. See, if one of these fits you. Somebody made you come. Somebody simply said, hey, you're going to church today whether you like it or not. You didn't want to come today, but somebody promised you lunch. <laughs> hey, all right, we got testimony, good, yeah. I go to church if somebody promised me lunch, I know that, I, there's no doubt about that. And let's face it, well, it's getting close to the end of the month, you've got Christmas coming up, you've got some bills that are due, and you can use lunch today, right? So you said, I'm going to go sit through Cowboy Church. I don't really want to, but I need lunch today. And I, I tell you what, I'm looking forward to lunch. So I'll go bear it for a little while so I can eat a good meal. Yeah. Nobody, okay, I'm not going to ask you. Number two, you had plans on coming today to try it out and see what it was all about. Oh, yeah, I've heard a lot of things about that Cowboy Church. Those people are just kind of crazy down there. I think I'll go down there and look because I don't, I don't know if that fits me or not, but I'm going to go look. You know, somebody told me they just ain't right down there, so I want to go see for myself. <laughs> We're not right. right. And proud of it, too. Amen. Yeah. <laughs> Amen. All right. <laughs> oh, your heart really wasn't in it. Your heart really wasn't in it, but you said, you know, I'm going to go see. Number three. You've joined this church and you've been coming for a while, but let's face it, today you'd rather be hunting, napping, or someplace else other than Cowboy Church. But you came anyway. 
well, look around you. There's a few of them that did. <laughs> they ain't here to hear it, but they're going to hear it on the video. You know what I mean? Yeah. Because I'm talking to you, all right, by the way. Number four. You really needed to hear from God today. Amen. Your heart and your mind were set on hearing from God before you ever even left the house. When you got up this morning, you said, God, I just really need something today. I need to hear from you. Amen. My heart's open. My mind's open. My ears are open. And I just desire to be in your presence so bad today. I'm going to go to Cowboy Church with an open mind, an open heart, open ears. And Father, just speak to me. Amen. Amen. You're already expecting great things before you ever got here. It wouldn't have mattered if the music was one guitar and one vocal. It wouldn't have mattered if it had been without anything, any musical instrument at all. Although we're not going to do that here probably. It wouldn't have mattered if it's an eight-piece honky-tonk band with a bunch of guys that came out of bars that got saved by Jesus Christ. You are ready to hear it. Amen? It didn't matter. It didn't even matter that this country band did a contemporary worship song as a special today because your heart was open and wanted to hear from God. Do you know that music and singing is biblical? Yes. It is. And before I list them, I'm going to tell you something here right now. And, and some of you uh, ladies, you can, or maybe, maybe it's you ladies, I don't know. Probably most of y'all sing like angels. But I've heard some guys that are mm, tone deaf. And before I list all the reasons for us to uh, have music in the church, I, I know one of you are sitting there and you're going, Brother, I ain't singing. I'm going to tell you that right now. I'm not doing it. I, I could call a coyote from three counties away if I open my mouth. I ain't doing it. I'll sit there. I'll read the words. I'll look at you. I'll, you know, whatever. But I ain't singing. You know there's a biblical verse for you? If you've got your Bible, I think you need to look at this. I want you to turn with me to Psalms 98.4. Uh-oh. It's gone. I think I lost the battery, gentlemen. Psalm 98.4. Can y'all hear me? I don't need a mic. Good night. Uh, I'm going to hand him this when he can get this back. All right, look at Psalms 98.4 for me real quickly. And it says, make a what? Make a what? One more time. Make a what? Oh, make a joyful noise. You know, was, the psalmist didn't say, hey, only if you can sing, sing. <laughs> hey, Amen? It doesn't say that at all. It doesn't say you have to have talent. It doesn't say that you have to be the world's greatest singer. Amen? Yeah. Amen? Yeah. It says make a joyful Right. Now, I'm, I'm kind of curious as to why the psalmist would say that. Because, you know, some of us, let's face it, that's what we're pretty good at is making joyful noises. Amen? Yeah. Hey, look at there. We're back. It says, make a joyful noise unto the Lord, all the earth. Make a loud noise. Yeah. See, you people that were visiting with us today thought we were unbiblical by being a little rowdy, but it says it right here. It says, make a loud noise and rejoice and what? Sing. Whoa, whoa, whoa. You guys ain't looking at your word. Look here. Sing what? Praise. One more time. Sing what? Praise. Yeah, we're going to get this right before the day's over with. I guarantee you. Yeah, it says sing praise. Oh, you mean I don't have to be the world's greatest singer to sing for Jesus Christ? No. All you have to have is the right heart. Amen? That's all you got to have. Jesus knows that he didn't give you the talent to sing, maybe sing up here, but he knows he gave you the heart and the spirit to sing where you are. Amen? Oh gosh, I hope y'all get this today. All right. It's biblical reasons. Get ready. I'm, I'm, I don't have all the verses up here. There was no way to get them all up here. So you're going to have to have your Bible ready. We're going to do Bible drill here real quick. Okay, you ready? All right, I'm going to hurry. When you sing, you obey. 
When you sing, you obey. Singing isn't an option in Scripture. It's not an option. It's not optional for you to sit there on your hands, quiet with a sour look on your face, and not do anything. It's, it's a command in the Bible for you and I to sing praises to God. Amen. All right? We read a, a few minutes ago in Colossians. That scripture that said that when we sing, we are to sing with gratitude. Gratitude. What? You mean I got to be grateful for that I'm having to sing? No, you're singing because you are grateful. Amen. 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 We're commanded to sing as we lift up the name of the Lord and worship and honor Him in our hearts. Look at Ephesians chapter 5. Ephesians chapter 5. Now, I preached these verses before, but it was on a whole different matter. <laughs> but when you get over there, you're going to laugh. Ephesians chapter 5, 18, 19. It says, and do not get drunk with wine, for this is debauchery, but be filled with the Spirit. Be filled with the Spirit. Addressing one another in what? Psalms and hymns. Oh, wow. We're supposed to sing. We're supposed to sing to one another, right? Spiritual songs, singing and making melody to the Lord with all your heart. Now, I got to wondering, when, when I read this, I got to wondering why they put the two of those together. Why in the world would you take a scripture that a lot of pastors have a tendency to preach on the drunk, get drunk kind of thing, and why would you put it with singing? <laughs> Any of you honky-tonk players want to answer that question? I don't know. You know. I got to thinking about that. And I got to thinking about, well... Hmm, interesting. Maybe the good Lord knew that when you, well, when you, when some of us, <clears throat> when some of us were in the clubs and we were playing music and we'd had about, a little, about one too many, we weren't inhibited at all. As a matter of fact, if you've been to the club and you've probably been sitting there drinking a little bit and listening to your favorite band, the, the more you drank, the more inhibited you became. Come on, I'm preaching the truth here. I've been there, I know that. All right? I know it to be true. Yeah, you start singing whether you can sing or not. Amen. Amen? And I've heard some guys on stage that couldn't sing and were singing whether they could or not. Amen? Amen? Yeah, we get uninhibited. Wouldn't it be nice? It says, don't get drunk on wine, for this is debauchery, but filled with the Spirit. Do you understand that you can be filled with the Spirit and not filled with another substance, and it will enable you to do the exact same thing? Yeah. It will. It'll fill you. It'll release you. You'll be un uninhibited. You'll be sitting there worshiping an almighty God, and you're thinking, wow, this is better than any alcohol, any drug I've ever taken. Yeah, yeah because I'm filled with the Spirit. I know how to worship. All right. Yo, come on. Yeah. God's people are more than just invited to sing. We're commanded to sing. Number two, when you sing, you dig deep roots in the Word. This is right. I don't care. You don't have to say amen. We don't always say amen around here, but I just like at least a head nod. At least I know you're alive. Okay, good. All right. Singing is one of the two chief ways that the Word of God dwells in us. It dwells in us when we sing. Let me make one point. That may be why churches have such issues with some of the more contemporary music. All right, I want you to listen very closely because some of you, boys, this place got quiet. Here you go. Here's the reason why some of you have an issue with some, some not all, but some of the contemporary music. It's because it doesn't all have the word in it. You see, when you're singing the word, you get the word. Now, you're, some of you are going, well, I thought everything we sing in church has got the word in it. Well, no, it doesn't. You see, some of the songs are designed to, to drive you emotionally to a point. But what happens is, is when you sing them over and over and over, we call them the 7-Elevens. All right? When you sing them over and 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 over, boy, by the time you get done, you're thinking, good night, are we, are we going to get done with this, right? Amen? Well, what it is, is it drives you to an emotional point, but when the song's over, so does the emotion. It's gone. Amen. All right? The ones, and then there are some good praise and worship songs. Don't get me wrong. There's some that I really like, like that one we just did. There's some that are biblical. 
There's some that are biblical, and as you sing those biblical songs, they fill you with something a lot more than just an emotional response, don't they? They, they begin to fill you with God's Word, and God's Word is what changes us, not our emotion. Amen? Yeah. Okay. Well, in case you've ever wondered why you have such a problem with that, there you go. Now you know. It's really not style. It's for that matter, it's not the singer or the band. Not anybody playing a piano or guitar. It is the Word of God. And you know why so many people have stuck here at this church and like the music here? It's because we do all the old hymns. And I make no apology for that at all. And, and if you've, been, if you've uh, come in my office for membership, I probably have told you, I hope you like it because we ain't changing it. All right? And the reason we do that the reason we do this is because it has the gravity and magnitude of God's Word written in every single one of them. Amen. You could turn to a scripture in the Bible, and I'm telling you, every, every song that's like that, we can find biblical support if it's not word by word written in there. Amen? You see, it's the Word of God that changes your heart. It's not the style of Okay, good. All right, good. Old songs through the ages have had deep-rooted biblical messages and spoken to people's hearts for hundreds of years. They are not done to bring you to an emotional level of worship, but they are done to encourage you to enter into worship. Um, by the way, we don't do these to kill time. Amen. That's the reason for the title today. This is not a time killer, folks. You know, the minute you hit the door here, I, fellowship is a part of worship. All right? So I hope that you're getting that when you get in here. But the minute we start playing even the welcome song, and by the way, can anybody tell me what song we played for the welcome today? Hallelujah, I'm ready to go. Nope. That's what I thought. That's what I thought. All right? Here, I'm going to tell you what we did, and then I'm going to ask you to pay attention next week. All right? We did when the saints go marching in, didn't we? Yeah. Okay. Now, here's the problem. That is a worship song, is it not? So if you're visiting with people, are you not worshiping at that point? Okay. All right. Moving on. I'm not going to belabor a point here. But just, just making a quick point. That is a worship song. We don't do them so you can go home and say, well, that wasn't all too bad. I mean, that preacher was kind of rough, but uh, the music was good. I mean, that's not, the, that's not why we do it. It's not why we do it. We do them because it sets yours and my heart in motion to receive the message. And I'm going to tell you something. If these guys up here, and lady, she's not here right now, but if they don't start with a heart of worship, you're not going to have one. That's why they're called worship leaders. And if they just get up here and go through the motions, just play their song, you're not going to understand the impact of music on worship. But if they get up here and they have a heart of worship, you're going to have a heart of worship because you're worshiping with them. Amen? Amen? Oh, I hope you get this. Whew. Man, singing stands alongside of preaching is one of the true great ways that God has ordained for His Word to dwell richly in each of us. It's three minutes. It's three minutes of very memorable or, or something you can memorize very quickly. Now, how many of you have gone home? Let me ask you one more question. How many of you have gone home and maybe Monday you find yourself whistling one of the songs or singing one of the songs that we did here? Yeah. yeah. And I bet you I could ask you how many of you know exactly what I preached on last week and not a hand would go up. <laughs> right? It's because music speaks to you. It's something you can memorize. You can pick it up real quick. And you know, I think that's God's Word in us. And it sticks with us. And we don't even realize it does, but we, it sticks with us. And we go home and we sing those songs, and it's like we're re-worshipping all over again. Amen? Amen. All right, number three. When you sing, you build up others. 
First, you build up fellow believers when you sing. You know that somebody sitting beside you is counting on you to be a support for them today. Amen. You ever thought about that? That somebody sitting beside you, maybe they didn't have as great a morning as you had. We saw some hands a while ago. But maybe by your singing, maybe by your attitude, maybe by the fact that you're giving God the praise he, that He deserves, by the way, you begin to influence them. Wow. You didn't know you had that power, but you do, through Christ. Right? Yeah, Ephesians 5, 19, notes specifically, there it says, addressing one another. Addressing one another in psalms and hymns and spiritual songs. I'm addressing you, you're addressing each other. You are a part of worship. Okay, good. When you sing, you build up others. Also know that when you sing, you're helping unbelievers. Oh, oh here we go. You see, when you sit there like a bump on the log... And you have no desire to even hum, whistle, or whatever you can do, make a joyful noise. There is somebody sitting here in this church today that hasn't come to a knowledge, a saving knowledge of Jesus Christ yet. Amen. And they're watching you. And they're thinking, well, if that guy or that gal is just an old sour puss and they don't care about singing anything like that, why should I? And it won't influence them at all. Amen. 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 However, if you figure out, you, I can make a joyful noise or I can whistle or just whatever I do, maybe just tap my foot or clap my hand or whatever like that, you're influencing a non-believer to say, hey, there's something about being a born-again believer in Jesus Christ. <laughs> Amen? Psalms 105. The Lord is calling the Israelites to be light unto the nations and to do, do this, he tells them, sing to him, sing praises to him, tell of his wondrous works. Good night. God has done something in every one of our lives this week. I promise you that. Amen? Amen. I promise you that somehow, some way, whether you thought about it yet or not, God has touched your life in a way that he, you've never experienced before, if you just think about it. And as you come into church, part of singing, part of the worship, is you recognizing that fact and sharing it with somebody else. Yes, preacher, that's right. When you sing, listen to this, when you sing, you make war. It makes sense to me. I'm part Indian, and I tell you what, I make war all the time back here on these drums. You know what I mean? <laughs> hey, works. We all make war when we sing. Chances are you didn't connect singing and warfare together, but the theme is visible in Scripture. In Colossians 3, Paul is challenging the Colossians to literally put sin to death in their lives. Put it to death. Kill it. Whatever you want to do. I'm going to sing it to death. Amen? Amen. Yeah. He also commands us to love and to have peace and forgiveness. And notice that right after that, singing is right on the heels of that. It's connected to peace, it's connected to forgiveness, and it's connected to love. Amen. Amen? We see the same thing in Ephesians chapter 5. The command to address one another in song comes right on the heels again of these two things. And the more you think about this, it makes total sense. What posture, think about this real quickly. What posture, I'm getting really warm in here. Is anybody like warm? All right, somebody turn that heat down. I'm dying up here. If you would. All right, thank you. The more you think about this, it makes total sense. What a posture, what posture could make, be more hated by the devil than the posture of a believer singing praises to Jesus Christ? Amen? Amen? Yeah. yeah. I can't think of many stances you can take that identifies you with Christ more and it identifies you against Satan more than the eyes and the heart and the mind lifted towards heaven singing a song. Amen. Amen? You know what? It's very hard to lie. It's very hard to be greedy. It's hard to think about unscriptural things. Something inappropriate when you're singing and making melody to the Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Amen. Your mind's just concentrated on that, isn't it? Think about it for a minute. That's all you're thinking about. Amen? Amen? Okay. A singing heart 
is a heart at war with the work of the devil. That's what it is. Number five, when you sing, you're spiritually strengthened for trial. Oh, boy. We talked about this last week. We talked about the trials in our life and how all of us seem to have had some at some point in time. Interestingly enough, the Bible says that when you have trials, sing. Well, we ought to be some singing fools, shouldn't we? Amen? I guarantee you, we ought to all be gifted in that area. Oftentimes we think only of singing when we're happy. Are you happy and you know it? Clap your hands. Well, what if I'm not happy? Clap your hands anyway, right? It says sing it anyway. Clap it anyway. Do it anyway. Because by the time you get done with that song, you can't help but be a little happier than you were. Right? Good. Acts 16. I want to tell you about a real quick story. Look at this. Paul and Silas. These were two guys. I'll tell you what. They were on a missionary journey. They were ministering to people after people after people. And Paul is no stranger to being thrown in jail. And by the way, he wasn't thrown in jail for many reasons like many of us are. <laughs> Paul didn't deserve to be there. Paul didn't deserve to be there. And I want you to look at this. Verse 25, it says, About midnight, Paul and Silas were praying and singing hymns to God. Amen. And other prisoners were listening. Wow. If you're happy and you know it, clap your hands. <laughs> Paul, Paul and Silas are going, Hey, I know we're in here. Let's just sing. Got nothing else to do, right? We're just going to pray. We're just going to worship God. We're just going to sing. I wonder what the jail would be like now if people broke out in song inside there. I don't know. Somebody might get saved, you reckon? I don't know. And the truth is confirmed in the lives of persecuted believers throughout history. I want you to listen to this. When we were in prison, but this came from a pastor that was on a mission trip, it says, when we were in prison, we sang almost every day because Christ was alive in us. They put chains on our hands and our feet. They chained, they chained us to add to our grief. Yet we discovered uh, that chains are a splendid musical instrument. So this is what they did. This is the day, clink, clink. This is the day, clink, clink, that the Lord hath made, clink, clink. Our persecuted brothers and sisters are showing us the truth that we see in Acts chapter 16, just like Paul and Silas did. Even in suffering, the Bible says, sing. Amen. Sing. When you sing, you walk a God-designed pathway to joy. Oh, not good. Here's what the psalm says, and I don't want you to turn to all these because I've got to move really quickly. Psalm 511, let all who take refuge in you rejoice. Let them ever sing for joy and spread your protection over them. That's awesome. Psalm 9-2, I will be glad and exalt in you. I will sing praise to your name almost high. Psalm 51-14, deliver me from the blood guiltness. O God, O God of my salvation, and my tongue will sing aloud of your righteousness. There's just one right after another after another about how we're supposed to sing. Amen? Amen. If you still don't believe me, here's the clincher. James chapter 5, verse 13. I'm going to have you turn to that one. James chapter 5, verse 13. And I want you to mark this in your Bible. James chapter 5, verse 13. I especially want those of you who said a while ago that you were not cheerful this morning to open this and read it. And read it before you come back to church next Sunday. And I hope you will. James chapter 5, verse 13. Is anyone cheerful? I asked that question a while ago. Didn't I? Right? It says, let him sing praise. Amen. Okay, if you're not, sing. If you are, sing. Okay, some of you are just not getting this. All right, we're going to... If you struggle for joy, sing. If you're joyful, sing. In God's perfect design and in His perfect understanding of the human condition, He has bound joy and singing together. If you want joy in your life, sing. Amen. They're together. Amen? True obedience, deep roots in the Word, building up others. Making war against Satan and sin, persevering, finding joy in God. All of these things bring glory to God, each person's chief goal and chief purpose in life. 
Amen. Amen. Now, not on the original list, but add it because I think it's important. And you better get it now. Okay, you better get it now. Listen very carefully to me. Careful, careful, careful. The book of Re Revelation, chapter 7. Book of Revelation, chapter 7, verses 9 and 10. If you don't like singing now, you're really not going to like heaven. <laughs> you're not going to like it. I don't know that we're going to be doing it 24 hours a day. Of course, that time doesn't mean anything to God, but I don't know if we're going to be doing it all the time, but the Bible is very clear that we will be doing some singing. In Revelation 7, 9 through 10, the Apostle John describes a glimpse of eternity with a great multitude of people. Every tribe, every language, singing before the Lord. Salvation belongs to our God who sits on the throne and to the Lamb. You know what we're going to be doing? We're finally going to have the heart of worship. We're finally going to have it. And we're going to all be singing together. You may have somebody sitting there. If you think sitting beside somebody that's tone deaf right now is a problem for you, wait till you're standing beside two people, neither one of who are speaking the same language. <laughs> right? But man, they're just getting after it. You're getting after it. And the only attitude is, is I'm here to worship God. I'm not here to pay attention to everybody else. Amen. So with all this being said, I want to visit with you one final thought. I want you to listen. This has kind of become a little bit of a pet peeve of mine, you know. And I, and I don't think anybody does this intentionally. But if you have a habit of visiting with your neighbor, checking out your text messages, finally making it to the coffee pot. Because you were too knee-deep in fellowship to make it there before church started, or worship actually started. Here's what you can safely assume you're affecting in your worship today based on the, the scriptures we just read. You're not allowing God to prepare and speak to your heart through the music in worship. Because I'm going to tell you, it starts right there. It doesn't start when the pastor gets up here and speaks. It starts from the word go, the very first song that's played. Amen? Amen? And some of us have missed half of worship because we're off yakking away or whatever. We didn't even check in until probably about halfway through the music. Well, it's no wonder we don't all have a heart of worship. Amen? Okay. Number two, you're causing somebody else to miss an opportunity. You're causing somebody else to miss an opportunity in worship. Maybe they're here for a very specific reason and they haven't got plugged in because all they're hearing is somebody chatter. Number three, you're not arming up for battle. It's going to be awfully hard for you to fight sin off if you're sitting there and not getting filled with the Word. Amen. Amen? And number four, you're not plugging in the joy. And trust me, there's a lot of people in this place today that could use more joy. Amen. Amen? There's someone beside you, behind you, in front of you who desperately needs to hear the Word of God. And I know the songs we do here at Cowboy Church can and will speak to the heart. Why? Because they're biblical. You may actually cause someone not to be in a position to hear from God today if you've checked out of the music portion of worship. I don't, again, I don't think anybody does this intentionally. I really don't. I don't think you purposely set out. I wouldn't purposely set out to do that. But I don't think you do either. I think most of us do it because we just don't understand the value of music when it comes to opening up our heart. Amen? Amen. Amen. Now, i got to say this. I've had two conversations this morning, and, 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 and I'm not trying to get into a religious battle here, so I'm not going to do it. But I've had two conversations with some folks today that have been challenged a little bit on why we use musical instruments. And I'm going to tell you something. And, and I'm, again, I'm not trying to, to battle anybody that doesn't use musical instruments in church. But I'm going to tell you something. Every single one of these guys, and every single one of these gal, or this gal that sits right, stands right here, have been gifted by God to do what they do.
And I can't think of any greater travesty in church, in the history of worship, or anything, than for these gifts not to be used for God's glory. Why do we use them? God gave them to them. They're a part of worship. Why shouldn't they give them back to God? Amen? Amen. 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 I hope and pray that next week, and I hope that you'll come back. You know, I appreciate you being here today, but I hope you'll come back. I hope next week that when you come in, you see, we've been kind of praying for a spiritual revival at this church for a while. And I think it's, I really honestly believe that the reason why we haven't seen a total revival, I mean, we've had a lot of people say, don't get me wrong, but I'm talking about where people just by the hundreds. I think it's possible. But I think the reason why it hasn't happened here yet, it's going to, is because we don't come in here with an attitude of worship expecting that. I really don't. So what kind of difference could we make next week? How many people we, could we see say, go through the waters of baptism like they're fixing to do here in just a minute? If we came with a heart of worship next Sunday. Amen? Let's go to the Lord in prayer. Kevin, would you come on, please? Father, I just thank you so much, Father, for this time together. Father, for the great worship that we've had this morning. Father, I pray that you would just fill our hearts with joy. Father, I pray that we'd be singing the songs, we'd be whistling, happy as we leave this place, Father, because we got to come into your presence. Father, we are so grateful that you were here today with us. Father, thank you for being a part of us. Father, thank you for loving us unconditionally. Thank you for music. Thank you for music that just warms the soul, speaks to the heart, gets us to the throne. Father, so we can hear and participate in your word. Father, it is so important. Father, you knew it was important before you ever made mankind that we sing together. And it is an expression of our worship, an expression of our heart. And Father, we just thank you for that. As we go from this place today, let us have music in our heart that we can share with others. And again, Father, we're just so blessed to be in your presence today. In Jesus Christ's name we pray. Amen. I'm going to ask if you'll stand for just a moment when we get ready for baptism. And one of the best songs we do here is a great song. It's called Amazing Grace, How Sweet to Sound. To Save a Wretch Like Me. Would you sing with me this morning? Oh, amazing.
seated. I tell you what, it, it does my heart good. Every time that I'm in Cowboy Church and I see a husband and wife get saved and baptized. <laughs> This is Curtis and Tessa Shockley, and they've been uh, coming here for quite some time. We had a chance to sit and visit uh, just a few days ago, actually. It wasn't very long ago. And the both of them have said, you know what, preacher? I've given my life to Christ. I don't want to be baptized so that everybody will know that I belong to him. He belongs to me. And guys, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to wait and give you this after we get done, okay? Uh, but uh, we're going to give you a Bible. And this Bible, I hope that you will use and use it daily. Um, one thing I want to encourage you to do, you, you can't eat one meal and physically survive. Right. Amen? you got to eat every day and, and several times a day. So I pray that you're just going to eat off the Word, that it would nourish you spiritually, and you would take it, and it would uh, show you the path that you need to go. And I tell you what, being branded by the one that saves us and loves us is the best possible thing you'll ever do in your life. Amen? Amen. Amen. Tessa, come on. Tessa, is it your profession of faith? that Jesus Christ has saved you from your, your sin and you, he is now Lord and Savior of your life. Yeah. My sister in Christ, I baptize you in the name of the Father, the, Holy, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, buried with him in baptism and then raised to walk in the newness of life. Curtis is a big old boy, so I'm going to use two of us here. Because <laughs> I had promised Curtis I wouldn't bang his head off the bottom of this thing. So. <laughs> Curtis, have you given your life to Jesus Christ and made him Lord and Savior of your life? Sure. Amen. My brother in Christ, I baptize you in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, buried with him in baptism, but then raised to walk in the newness of life. God is good. All the time. All the time. Let's pray. We'll have the band dismiss us. Father, I thank you so much for this time together, Father. And I just pray. Again, Father, that you would bless this family that's come to a saving knowledge of you. That you would guide and protect them, strengthen them every day in their walk with you. Father, we are just so thankful. We get to be witnesses for these two that have come to that knowledge. Father, again, just bless this place. In Jesus Christ's name we pray. Amen. Amen. Thank you for watching this week's message, and we hope you'll come and give us a look this Sunday. Here you'll find some of the finest country gospel music in the state of Texas, along with good, sound, Bible-based preaching. And I promise, you'll always be greeted with a handshake and a smile. Won't you come join us this Sunday at 10.30 a.m., and we'll have the coffee ready.